So I actually bought a new two new sheets of plywood this morning from the store, treated half inch. I'm gonna make a box for the back bumper to put all the electrical stuff in. That would be the heater, uh, the propane tank, and maybe the little pump. I'm not sure where the pump's gonna go, and maybe some filters. And it should be room for other things, but it'll be a weatherproof box. So I bought the plywood. I didn't buy the framing lumber. Picked him up on the side of the road this morning. But we're just gonna make a simple little box, and it's gonna be rainproof and hopefully bug proof otherwise the paper wasps and the mud daubers will fill it up with their stuff i bought the materials for this my foundry shed building whatever you want to call it second hand somebody had taken a building apart and thinking they were going to rebuild it and end up not building it and i bought all the sheet metal it's super heavy duty stuff the curved sheet metal for the roof and the curved trusses and when i Put together my version of it i had like i don't remember 14 sheets of tin left over um i wish i would have kept them but at the time money was tight so i sold 12 of them and i kept two thinking i might need them and i don't know why, why i will ever need them for this building so i'm gonna cut these up and uh i'm gonna make a um, overhang over the windows on the teeny house and i'm gonna make the top for my mechanical box that's gonna go on the back bumper so I got the first two cuts marked. I'm gonna get the, I don't know, I guess the big boy grinder with a cut off wheel. And it's not gonna be a pleasant thing, but we'll cut it. So I don't know my gauges and I don't know what gauge this metal is, but it's not gonna be cut with tin snips. And it's not Home Depot metal. This is real old school sheet metal. Um, the big grinder cut it pretty well. Not that I really went in a straight line, but I didn't go in a terrible line. And when I got through cutting it, I put a little flap disc on the grinder and kind of eased up all the gnarly edges so that I probably wouldn't bleed quite so much when I was working on this uh, piece of metal. So far we have a very basic plywood box, treated plywood and treated little um, one and a half inch by one and a half inch studs and treated framing on the bottom. I put my sheet metal on the top and screwed it down on the ends. And now I have a board. This was actually that wormwood that was on the bottom of the keel. I ran through the planer and cleaned it up. And I have it, I don't know if you can see it. I scribed it to match the sheet metal. So I'm gonna take it down and cut that arc and cut the bottom and get rid of all these little screw holes. And no, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. But anyway, I'm gonna cut that arc and uh, I want it sealed. I want to like to make this uh, bug proof if I can seal it up that well. Awfully nice of somebody to buy all this treated lumber and paint it gray and throw it out at the street. Frame the whole thing with this stuff. Um, I don't have the floor screwed down yet. This is just two by's, I ripped them in half. I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna put some screen, some window screen under this vent this is a vent because it's going to have a propane tank in here and i'm gonna put some screen keep the bugs out and i have some stainless steel screen that will do just fine last forever so i've cut a floor it's just more two buys ripped down the middle i put some stainless steel screen here to keep the bugs out and i've got this expanded metal to protect the screen so the inside is pretty well closed up i got the curved part in the front and I want to put siding on the ends and I want to paint and it's just too freaking wet. Plywood's soaking wet. The two bars that I got out of the garbage pile were soaking wet. It's rained here every day for at least three weeks and it just started raining again. It's not flooding rain. Nobody's houses are going underwater, but everything is wet. The next thing I need to do is get under the mini house and start wiring and it's just nasty under there. So a little bit frustrating, but it's okay. First world problems, as my daughter would say. Another rainy afternoon. I think I'm starting to mildew behind my ears. Time to make the doors for this uh, little work cabinet. And I've been thinking about this for a while. I really wanted to make a wooden frame and inset it with lap siding because one, the lap siding is almost 100% weather resistant and it wouldn't be that heavy. And I've got all that stuff. 
but I just couldn't figure out how to make these corner joints that would be strong enough to not sag because wooden joints out in the weather they don't stay together too well so I'm gonna pull one of my sheets of white 3 8 fur plywood down and make the door skin with that and on the back side I'm gonna put some 2 by 2s to give it some strength and it won't be as cool but uh it'll be more practical I think okay changed my plan I got the 3 8 plywood and this side I just have screwed in place with a couple of screws with the good side facing in and I got the inside perimeter marked with a sharpie so I can put a frame on this side without make sure I get it in the right spot and after that I'm going to put siding on the outside of this plywood so the door will be a little bit heavy but uh it'll be long lasting and I have the siding so I got the first door with the braces on the back clamped up um, I used two strips and laminated them together uh, for two reasons one this is southern yellow pine and it's real twisty so if i were to use one and it would decide to take a bow i'd be kind of screwed and two kept my waist down i had a bunch of little pieces that i could get these rips out of so let this sit an hour or so take clamps off and i'll do the other one so this is the first for me all of the glue joints failed never had this happen before took the clamps off they were on there for two days and I noticed one little corner sprung and I started pulling on it and it just fell off and started pulling on all of them they all fell off I don't know what's going on um, maybe the glue is old but I've used old glue before maybe the boards were too wet I mean everything's wet around here I don't know but this is the first so I'm gonna throw this glue in the garbage I got a new a new uh, bottle and we'll try again Okay, door one, second take, the glue stuck, and this is door two, first take, and I don't anticipate any problems. So my box is sitting on the back bumper. Um, it overhangs a lot. <clears throat> so I need to attach it. It doesn't have to be super strong. It's not going to ride on the highway here, but uh, I need to make sure the wind doesn't blow it off or if kids climb on it or open both doors, it doesn't fall off. So I need to put some kind of bracket. If I was at the foundry where the welding machines are, it'd be easy. But I'm here, so I'm gonna put this clip here. I got a big piece of metal I'm gonna put here and then put a bolt to pull it down tight. And the one on the other end, same thing. And on here, I think I'm just gonna use two of these clips. I'm gonna bolt one here and I'll bolt one here with a spacer. And I think three hold down bolts, bolts <clears throat> will be plenty. So it's not gonna be moving around. I think that's gonna be fine. I have to drill some awkward holes, but uh, we'll deal with that. So I'm at home and try to keep all my metal junk at the foundry and not at home, but I did have these two pieces left over. They were parts of the original trailer. I don't even know what part they were, but if I cut them off here and here, I think I'll be able to use them for my brackets. So put some blue tape here so I can see on pencil. And put the little bracket in place and mark the holes and I got them center punched as best I can this is not an easy spot to get to and I'm in the unenviable task of drilling a 3 8 hole but I think I'll drill a little hole through the out through through and through and then get on the outside and drill a bigger 3 8 hole I think that's gonna be um, I think it'll be doable so I'm gonna get to drilling Bracket number one, drilled and bolted. Actually, it wasn't that bad, except that some freaking mosquitoes are eating me up, even though I hosed myself with deep. The other one, I wish I wouldn't have stapled this screen down, but it's down for good, so we'll see what we can do. Three clips installed. One, two, three. They're all through bolted. They're all pretty ugly. No two bolts match, but they'll do the job. I did have to unstaple my screen, but I can staple it back. And I can put the floor in, but I don't, I don't think I'll fasten the floor until after we move. Because you never know. But uh, this is good, and it's very sturdy. It's not Teeny housework took a back seat uh, this week to helping my bride make a mold of this relief sculpture. This relief is heading to Detroit. Um, this is the clay original and we need to make a mold so she can cast a permanent one so i got it laying down on the table here and i put a board around the perimeter screwed up from the bottom 
Um, typically, we just uh, lay our reliefs on a little sheet of plywood and screw them down. But this one's too big, so it's a uh, five by five. So I just uh, added some pine around the perimeter, and we got it waxed, and we got it um, separator sprayed on the clay, the modeling clay, and we're going to cover this with a uh, two-part liquid rubber. It's a urethane rubber. We did four coats. Um, let it kind of tack up between the coats. This is at the end of the second coat. Um, got that weird color variation because we switched from an old bucket to a brand new bucket and it was just a little bit of a different color. Um, it also has a thickener mixed in with it. We use polyfiber and that keeps it from just running all over the floor which it would want to do if we didn't put the thickener in it. This is the mother mold for the first relief uh, heading to Detroit on the 45 foot wall. So this is the first of 11. This is the biggest one. So we laid the uh, laid Debbie's art down. I screwed the edge around the perimeter from the bottom. Typically we just put her relief on another sheet of plywood that's bigger, but this one's too big. So we did that and then I built a frame. Then we did the rubber, which I think I have photos of. And then I built this frame around the perimeter and built a grid and then we laid uh, plastic on the inside. This is a two-part mix. Um, just mix it up and gets hard like real quick. Doesn't have a bad odor. It's not polyester resin. I don't know what it is. So now when we turn it over, we'll have a flat surface, a flat framework that holds the plastic into place and the plastic holds the rubber mold because the rubber has no strength whatsoever. It just picks up all the detail. So picture a newborn baby can't hold itself together, the, the mother has to hold its head up. So I think that's why they called us the mother mold. This will hold the rubber, we'll turn it over. I have to make a metal frame for the inside, like a French cleat to hang it on the wall. And then we will cast the art in something permanent because what's under here, the art that's under here is in oil based clay and it's not permanent. You can stick your fingers in that and I can just picture all the kids at the church signing their names on them, Jesus's feet. So that's no good anyway. This is what I've been doing for a few days here, and that's why there's not a whole lot of tiny house um, footage going anywhere. So I've got my two doors fitting pretty well. Um, they're not on hinges yet. They just got a couple of screws holding them in place. So I'm gonna take them down. I'm gonna paint them inside and out. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these boards and paint them. And I'm gonna put uh, siding on them. I'm gonna weatherproof them with some redwood siding which I think I have plenty of. If not, I have some cypress siding. So they're gonna get a whole lot heavier, but um, weight is not really an issue because it's sitting on this bumper. And as long as it's not too heavy for us to pick up, uh, it's, not a, it's not a weight problem. It won't ride on the highway back here. Once upon a time, we were gonna paint something red and I had white primer and I thought it's kind of hard to cover white primer with red paint. So I tinted the primer with a little red paint and the primer's pink. And that's why we have pink primer. We never did paint anything red, but I have a gallon of pink primer. So uh, the pink on the teeny house, it won't be pink forever. Anyway, I primed the two doors for the storage box or the a mechanical box. I've got some old siding, some cypress siding. I'm gonna cover these doors with siding and we're gonna go to Home Depot and try to find some hinges that might work. I don't have any and hang them. So I got the two doors covered with siding. It was really easy. Every single piece is the exact same length. This is good cypress siding, but it's probably lead paint. I'm a little scared of lead paint. I think it's done damage to me already. I remodeled houses for too many years. Um, so I didn't do anything. I just cut it and nailed it down. I'm gonna bring it outside and scrape it and hose it to get rid of all the dust outside and not in here. And then we'll put a coat of paint over it to kind of seal it up. The siding scrubbed and hosed off. I bought two hinges from Home Depot. So I put the door in the hole, centered it. You know, it's got a little plate all the way around. Propped it with this board to hold the weight. And I clamped it here so it won't move. And I took my little Home Depot hinges. I had to bend them a little bit, but wasn't a problem because they're made in China. And let's see if the door works. Hell yeah. Let's go do the other one. Hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll fit just as well. Okay, we have door fittage. 
actually it fit pretty good and i'm not through with this box i'm going to put the same siding on this end and i'm going to put the hot water heater on this end and i don't know how it hot it gets so i may end up putting some of that um i don't know what you call it the stuff you put under ceramic tiles that cement board here to protect it from the heat i'm gonna have to i'll probably just hang it and turn it on and see how hot it's gonna get but I'm going to end the video here. Uh, I'm running out of time to finish it. I did a lot of work for uh, my sculptor bride this week. So it took up most of the week. But I did get this box kind of put together and hung. So thanks for watching.